The Buffalo Bills continue to make additions in free agency. This week on the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your host, Justin Goddard. Bills Mafia, welcome in to another episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fanbase Podcast Network. My name is Justin, and I will be your host today. Um, and this week, just a few things I want to talk about. Um, one, the Bills continuing to make additions in free agency. Um, two, we have some news coming out of the league meetings. Just want to touch on a couple of things we heard from uh, Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott. Um, some real changes, and then. Um, in the second segment, we're going to look not so much at players and mock drafting, um, just so much as kind of my draft strategy, um, still working on doing some draft scouting, not quite ready to put my official mock draft out there. That'll be in a couple weeks. Um, but I am working on lining up a guest, um, should be for next week's episode. Um, just m- much more well versed on college football than than myself. Um, also runs a, a Bills uh, Bills page on social media. So we're gonna bring him on, talk a little bit more about the draft, run through a couple mock drafts with him. Um, hoping to have that for next week's show. Um, but this week, want to start out talking about just kind of we're getting into that that slower time of free agency. Um, where we see the moves start being, you know, smaller moves, um, they're trickling in less and less, and you know, we start shifting our focus to the draft. Um, well, the Bills are continuing to make moves, and this time period, as well as kind of the free agency wave after the draft, is where I was expecting the most movement from the Bills. Um, just going into the off season, knowing we weren't going to end up with a ton of cap space to spend. Um, and then seeing kind of the first moves of free agency, um, even seeing things like not re- restructuring all of the money that we could with Josh Allen. Um, it was kind of a, another solid indicator that the bills weren't going to be going crazy with money this year. Um, but I, what I do like about in particular, the recent additions um, that we saw is Brandon Bean's really doing a good job again of setting himself up to not have any, you know, real glaring holes on the roster, um, allowing him flexibility in the draft to, you know, move up, move down, stick and pick, you know, just follow his board. Um, the only time under Bean we really went into the draft with a real obvious need was the year that we drafted Kyer Elam. Um, and, you know, I'm, I've said it many times on this podcast, I'm still not all the way out on Elam, um, still a super young player, um, but also kind of going into the draft, broadcasting that need, you know, we, we see the Chiefs jump us and take, uh, take a cornerback. So, you know, was, was that a calculated move because they were anticipating we were going corner, um, So some of these moves here, you know, they're not the sexiest names. They're not the sexiest places to have depth. Um, But for me, this time of year with, you know, the Bills returning a really solid roster, these depth moves, these transactions that we're seeing right now are all about kind of establishing the floor, um, bringing in some valuable depth and, you know, this year we actually are having a good amount of turnover, um, but we're still returning a, a very large core of who we had last year. And, you know, the team struggled at times, but they were able to turn it around, win in the playoffs, and how much do you want to tinker with that? Um, so the two guys I'll talk about first, I think, are really more of the depth players, and that's Will Clapp. Uh, on the offensive line, and then Casey Tuhill. And these are a couple of guys that I don't think are going to see a ton of action. Um, To me, the addition of Tuhill probably spells the end of Shaq Lawson in Buffalo. Um, Younger, similar player, and we all know how much I've loved Shaq 
<laughs> Shaq Lawson throughout his second stint with the Bills, um, just very disciplined player, great against the run. Um, he's always staying home. And I think watching some some of KC Two Hill, we see a lot of the same. Um, something that I really liked watching his tape is he's just a pure effort guy. Um, he doesn't stop, and that translates to um, trekking runs down from from the backside, um, getting some cleanup sacks because he just kept trying and. A guy that I'm super comfortable with, you know, kind of rounding out this defensive end depth. Um, when we were talking about the defense and in particular the defensive line, um, we were very thin on numbers. And this is a piece that I'm I'm good with being uh, part of a rotation piece. Um, I don't think it precludes you from doing something bigger or you know, making a significant investment in the draft still. Um, So overall, pleased with the signing. Um, Mike Edwards coming over from Kansas City as a safety. Um, This is one of the guys that was pretty high on my radar as we were kind of looking at the possibility of losing both Poyer and Hyde in this offseason. Somebody I was even, you know, taking a look at when, when we thought we were losing Poyer last year. Um, love that he comes over from the Chiefs. I don't know how much players are actually sharing their knowledge about other teams and all that, but it can't hurt to to have an extra, you know, an extra voice in the room. He's been on, you know, championship rosters. Um, I like that from a leadership standpoint, just knowing that little bit of extra it takes towards the end of the year to to get it done. Um, and I think this adds competition. I, uh, it's a guy that wasn't a full-time starter, um, in Kansas city, but, you know, kind of did a little bit of everything. And I think that's really awesome competition to bring in on the back end when, you know, it was kind of question marks about what are we looking at for the ceiling of, you know, Cam Lewis and Taylor Rapp, um, I think Mike Edwards ends up being one of your starters and we see what shakes out with the rest of it. Um, Again, not an area that um, I think, I don't think any of the moves at safety this year um, are precluding you from taking somebody in the draft either. I think Rapp and Edwards both got pretty modest contracts. I think Cam Lewis got, you know, a backup contract. Um, I will say that this is not a position that I would be super psyched to target very high in the draft. Um, just with the track record that we've seen, um, with McDermott and, and Babbage for that matter, um, in being able to develop safeties and get the best football out of them. Um, I don't think it's a position that you need to attack like round one, round two. Um, I've also talked on this podcast about kind of like the, the devaluation of the safety position. Um, I think it would be cool to have like a super high end, um, athletic freak, whatever back there at safety. But I think we've seen, um, particularly through Poyer and Hyde, um, neither of them were, you know, super high picks. Neither of them were tremendous athletes. And we see, you know, sitting here now at the tail end of their time with the Bills, like how amazing they were for the team. And it wasn't necessary to take these guys in the first round. Um, so that's that's somewhere where I'm willing to see investment. Um, doesn't have to necessarily be a high pick for me. And probably the pick, uh, the pickup I'm most excited about um, is Austin Johnson uh, coming over D tackle? Um, Daquan Jones was recruiting him. I think he broke the news of his actual signing. Um, former teammate going all the way back to college days, um, and this this just makes me really excited for 
kind of that the depth piece, but it's it's not even really a depth piece because we rotate the defensive line so much. But just kind of having that actual second one tack defensive tackle, and we see how much better this defense was with Daquan Jones in there. This is going all the way back to when Starla Starla Tulale was on the team and couldn't stay healthy and how much more the defense struggled. Um, This is two bona fide one techs that can play. Um, This is going to keep the linebackers free. We saw Bernard have a breakout season last year. Um, We're expecting Milano back fully healthy and, you know, every bit of Matt Milano that we always knew. Um, And I think this just adds to what your linebackers can do. Um, Both these dudes are going to be eating up space in the middle. uh, Great at stopping the run. Working next to Ed Oliver, letting him do his thing, getting in there and penetrating. And, you know, depending on what happens at the defensive end position, might also help, you know, get those guys one-on-one and kind of cover up maybe a little lack of... um, talent that we have as you get into you know the depth of the dn position um so really excited for austin johnson i this is the type of signing that uh, a couple of years back when we brought in tim settle for the first time um i have like the same expectations for johnson that i had for settle at the time um but settle was kind of more like a hope and a prayer you know, he was stuck behind a lot of high-drafted, talented defensive linemen in Washington. I thought he just kind of needed his chance. Um, he did come on a little bit last year, but was overall kind of a disappointment in Buffalo. Um, Johnson's a guy that's been in the league. He's proven in the league. Um, and I think he's an immediate upgrade to anybody you had on the roster at the defensive tackle position not named Ed Oliver or Daquan Jones. Um, so sweet pick up there. A little bit out of the league meetings this year, and the, the one thing I'll touch on real quick, and I don't like to get into a ton of the rules changes things, um, but we saw that they did approve the, um, the penalty for the hip drop tackle. Um, I, I just think it's really tough. You know, it's it's already hard enough to play defense in the NFL. You already have, you know, this like hit zone of you got to you staying above the knee, not aiming for the head. Um, we particularly see that with the quarterbacks. I'm all for player safety, and I know that's kind of what the league is dressing it up as, and I, I have a hard time rocking with the NFL anytime they say they care about player safety Um, because it's that's a story for another time Um, my biggest issue with this is football is an inherently a violent contact sport I get trying to take injuries out of the game I get trying to protect the players you want the best product on the field Um, but at a certain point you're really handcuffing defenses from what they're able to do um not only is it you know a penalty now it's a 15 yard penalty it's another judgment call from the refs we already see terrible officiating in the nfl um it's just not something that i think officials needed added to their plate um and in particular we see you know Particularly in the first year that they add a rule, um, the officiating of it is at its worst. We as fans don't really know what they're going to call and, you know, what's a good call, what's a bad call. I don't think the refs know exactly what they're calling. Um, So, yeah, I mean, we thought we had enough outrage over officiating in the last couple of years and it's it's about to get significantly worse. so we'll see what happens there. I think the game is already over officiated. There's a flag like 25, 30% of plays in some games. And this is just, it's just going to add more to that. Um, but more on the Bills side of things, 
Um, kind of touching on things Brandon Bean and McDermott said and just lumping them together. Um, we did hear them talk about not ruling out anything with Micah Hyde, um, which I thought was kind of a strange comment. Um, to me, feels kind of like Micah Hyde is considering retirement, but didn't fully decide on it yet. And, you know, the brass didn't want to be the ones to tell somebody else's news. Um, it, I just, I haven't heard any whisperings of him, you know, talking to other teams, any possibility of returning hi- here. So I I have to assume that that's, it's kind of, you know, him moving towards retirement. Um, now, if there's a world where he wanted to come back to Buffalo on, you know, kind of uh, that minimum deal and be another voice in the room and, you know, round out some depth on the team. I'm I'm not all that opposed to it if we have, you know, the roster space available and it makes sense. Um, I think you would be losing somebody from the safety room if you did a move like that. And then at, at this point, it'd be really... Damar Hamlin would be really the only person that could go. Um, this everybody else with new contracts. Um I'm I'm not reading into that story too much. I still fully anticipate Hyde to retire. Um, the second little tidbit I found much more interesting, and this is an idea I had floating around in my head before. Um, also think it's you know highly unlikely. Um, we heard Bean and McDermott both talking about you know Trey White, and they both kind of got a little bit emotional about Trey White. Um, I think he was as loved in the organization as he was by our fans and kind of, you know, just talking generally about, you know, not ruling out some sort of return with Trey White, you know, how hard it was to let him go. Um, Ultimately it is a business and tough decisions have to be made. Um, But I had this idea in my head of, you know, the bills end up cutting Trey White and, He's floating around out there trying to get, you know, a prove-it deal coming off of two season-ending injuries. You know, he's not old by any stretch of the imagination, but he's getting up there. Um, You know, what what if we were in a world where he was kind of floating out there a little bit and ended up taking a a one-year prove-it deal in Buffalo Um, and being kind of touched on that of, like, the organization's doing what the organization has to do, Trey's you know, doing what he has to do. Um, we'll see what happens type of thing, he said. And, you know, Trey White has, you know, been reported to be meeting with a few teams. I don't see this scenario playing out. I think there's enough teams with need out there and cash to burn that he's going to get, you know, a decent one-year deal somewhere, you know, I, I don't know one year, eight to 10 million, something like that with some incentives um, to see if he can, you know, kind of return to the form. Um, But the longer he sits out there, if he's not getting any offers and there's a world where we could bring Trey White back on a low contract and, you know, let him finish his rehabbing and and see what he looks like um, inside our building, I'm very comfortable with what we have at cornerback right now. Um, But you will never find me in a world where I'm not willing to turn every stone to see if Trey White could end up back on the team. Um, There's a little bit of, uh, a lot of it, if I'm being honest, a lot of emotion going into that thought process. Um, Just as a a fan, um, he was such a a pivotal player in you know part of this turning around of the franchise the resurgence um he's been fun on and off the field he's been great in the community he's been a great leader um does everything the right way so i i would absolutely love to be in a world where trey white ends up back on the bills again don't think it's very likely and like i said at the same time i can separate you know the business side of it i fully understand you know, we've played 
basically the last three years without Trey and, you know, got replacements and Benford looking like a stud and trading for Razul Douglas and him looking like a perfect fit for the team. Um, so I, I completely understand why the team had to move on. At the same time, if the, if any mention gets made of the possibility of Trey White ending back up in Buffalo, it's going to make my ears perk up. Going to take a quick break, and on the other side, just want to talk a little bit about the draft before we dive into our you know full draft coverage. Uh, stick around. Hey, this is Brother Bill. Now back to the show. Welcome back in, and thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. Um, As always, if you've made it this far into the show, I do ask that you like, share, subscribe. Uh, Make sure you tell a friend about the show. It helps us out greatly over here. Um, Free agency, draft, more free agency after the draft. Um, Off-season can be pretty wild, so just make sure you're subscribed so you're not missing any episodes coming out every week. Um, just want to talk a little bit about the draft and kind of, I guess, kind of a, a macro view of it without getting into um, names and players and, you know, average draft positions and all that stuff first. Just kind of looking at where the roster's at right now and, you know, if the draft was tomorrow, kind of positionally where I put the most importance and like I said in the first segment it's it's kind of set up really nicely for me and again that there's not like a glaring need jumping out jumping out at us and even last year we we thought that was linebacker um there's a plan there all along and you know with this year coming out of the draft we have the ten million freed up from from Trey White being cut. Um, we've seen in the past kind of like these handshake deals with Bean, where you know signings are announced really quickly after the draft, and it's kind of like it was already in place with somebody, and they're kind of like, hey, if we don't get this position in the draft, we want to give you this contract. So I think he set it up nicely that. That combined with the uncertainty of what the rest of the league is going to do in drafting at the tail end of each round makes it really hard to be predictive sitting here. Um, it was a lot easier back in the days when, you know, we we're sniffing at the top 10 every year and, you know, you eliminate three to five spots for quarterbacks and you basically got your pick of the litter. Um, But just kind of looking at where our needs stand now and then kind of being able to compare that to when we actually approach draft day. Um, So for me right now, the biggest need for the Bills would still be the defensive line. Um, I know this is kind of a tough pill to swallow, just with how much investment we've seen from Bean over the years. Um, players that, you know, didn't necessarily work out, players that were okay, um, some drafted players that didn't work out. You know, we saw Boogie Bash from a few years. He's already not on the roster. Um, AJ Epinesa started, you know, blossoming, but I guess still kind of underwhelming for a second round pick. Um, We've seen Groot. He looks great. Um, Von Miller, huge investment. Um, Not one that I can hold against Bean at all. In Von Miller's first year with the Bills, he was every bit of the player that we brought him in to be, and injuries happen. I can't blame Bean for that. Um, Hopefully he can come back to some sort of form of, you know, the player that we signed two years ago. Um, All that being said, I think we're still looking at a roster that even with, you know, the additions of Tuhill and Johnson, um, between defensive line, or I'm sorry, defensive tackle and defensive end, we're still really thin at numbers. And 
still could use some extra impact there. Um, I think Austin Johnson is a big enough signing that it kind of lowers defensive tackle for me a little bit. Um, but you're still missing depth behind Ed Oliver. Um, Johnson's only signed to a one-year deal. I believe Daquan Jones was brought back on a two-year deal, so you still don't really have a long-term answer there. Um, and then when you get into the defensive end position, you know, how many people are already ready for Von Miller to be off the roster? Um, you got a decision coming up with Groot. I think it's a really easy, you know, signing signing team option for uh, his fifth-year option. Um, but he's going to get a pretty good contract after that. And beyond that, you just added two hill. Um, I don't think he's doing anything to stop you from drafting a guy. And what beyond that, you have Kingsley Jonathan, who, you know, has been a nice player, but a nice depth player, but, he, you know, he's been around. He hasn't been able to stay on the active roster. Um, so, if everything shook out and, you know, I, I had my choice at pick 28, it's a little bit difficult because um, I I am a guy that really wants to draft a receiver. Um, but I think it's a very deep draft for a wide receiver. And I think given the choice between like the same caliber wide receiver or defensive end, defensive tackle. Uh, I'm probably putting the defensive line as my first priority. We've heard Bean talk about, you know, football still being one in the trenches. Um, he just got done saying, you know, if the team was going to extend itself financially, it was going to be in the trenches. We've seen every off, off season um, a commitment to the offensive and defensive line. Um, so all things equal, I'm guessing that the the first move would be the defensive line. And that's also considering there was a first round investment on offense last year, a receiving weapon. Granted, it was tight end and, you know, we say it's a slot receiver in a tight end's body and blah, 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 all that about Kincaid. Um but Brandon Bean is a GM also probably thinking, you know, we got year two coming up for this guy. We just added Curtis Samuel. We still have Stefan Diggs. It's just hard for me to view this if I'm being, you know, realistic and trying to project what Brandon Bean is thinking. Um, it's hard for me to think that he would be putting wide receiver as the top priority. Um, I would probably put wide receiver as my second priority though. Um, and all the things that I just said still remain true. You did just add Kincaid last year. Um, you did add Curtis Samuel, you still have stuff on digs. Um, this is more for, I still think that we need like a true number two receiver. That's going to stretch the field. That's going to take some attention away from digs. Um, and it's also the succession plan for Diggs. Um, I am not one of the people that's ready for Diggs to be gone now because he tweets things. But there's enough of there's enough people out there that are ready for Diggs to be gone now. Personally, I don't care what he tweets. Dude shows up and puts up a thousand yards every season. Uh, he's been at least in the top three of best receivers on the Bills in my lifetime. Some of the ones are. You get into like the Eric Molds, and it's a little bit harder to judge with some of the quarterback play. Um, but for me, this is still, you know, do we see Diggs bounce back from kind of like a really unproductive second half of the season last year? Um, or is he starting to fall off a little bit? Personally, I don't think that's happening yet. I think he's going to age nicely. Um, but you're still looking at the fact that he is getting older and you're going to have to move on there at some point. Um, and with a quarterback like Josh Allen, I I want to be drafting receiver every year 
And if you end up with too many receivers, pick who you're trading away. Um, but I don't ever want to be in kind of this position that we're in kind of last year going into this year of like, do we have enough weapons for him? I want it to always be operating in a surplus. And if we have to get rid of somebody, we have to get rid of somebody. Um, after that, I would probably put safety as my third need. Um, again, we just added Mike Edwards. We saw Cam Lewis come back. We saw Taylor Rapp come back. I think this is a position that you could kind of be looking at the players we have now as, for lack of a better word, term, kind of get-by guys. Um, I'm excited to see what Taylor Rapp does in a second season with the Bills. Um, I think there was times he looked good and there was times he looked bad last year. And... I, I think, you know, there's still some ceiling for him to to hit. Um, but just for how important safety is to this team, and now that we're talking, you know, getting into the third, fourth, later rounds, um, I'd be interested in adding somebody that could be, you know, a, a long-term starter for this team. It's not going to cost you a wheelbarrow full of money. And you know, can grow and develop with this defense. We have some young pieces on it. Um, when you're talking about Oliver, Groot, um, Bernard, Benford, um, if Elam develops, there's some young pieces on this defense and we kind of have like youth at each level and I kind of want to continue that going with the safety position. Um, and then beyond that, I would probably sprinkle running back in as a need. Um, I don't believe he was going to be making any sort of return to the Bills anyways, but we saw uh, Damian Harris has officially retired from the NFL. Um, Latavius Murray is not back. We did re-sign Ty Johnson. I believe that was only a one-year deal. Um, and for me, I've been very happy with what we've seen out of Cook, um, but he's going into year three, and do you want to get a couple of years down the line here and be talking about paying, by that point, what, something like $15 million a year for a running back? Um, running back is another position where I would just kind of always be reloading the stable, um, and I think you can do this late in the draft. For this year, I'd kind of be looking for, you know, that that downhill thumping type. I think we get some of that out of Ty Johnson. Um, but just the guy that can bang between the tackles and, you know, do some of the dirty work for you, take some of the load off of James Cook, you know, keep him keep his legs fresh. And then, you know, a couple of years after that, you can look at, you know, replacing that dynamic speed receiving threat and all that again. Um, not really somebody that is interested in paying running back second contracts as the league is going right now. Um, we'll see if the league starts to shift a little bit. I think running backs are going to start getting their valuation back up as um, teams continue to do this, you know, too high defense daring you to dink and dunk them. I think running games are going to become more important again. Linebackers are getting lighter and being more coverage players. Um, so I think we could see a resurgence of running backs as it stands right now. I wouldn't have a lot of interest in giving second contracts. Um, I think that's easy to say right now until we see another you know year or two of James Cook being towards the top of the league for running backs and all of a sudden, I'll be asking Brandon Bean to find a way to make it happen. Um, so that would be kind of the top four spots I'd be looking at. Um, drop us a comment. Let me know what you think are your top needs. Um, if you want to start dropping some players that you want to hear us talk about um, as we get closer to the draft. Like I said, we're 
as of today, one month away from the draft. Um, so probably pretty much every show um, from now until then is going to be kind of focused on the draft unless, you know, some breaking news happens for the Bills. Um, so make sure you're tuning in every week. Make sure you're subscribed so you're not missing any episodes. Um, that's going to do it for tonight's episode, and we'll see you next week. Go Bills! Thank you.